Welcome to session five, Gentle Yoga with Laura Ashland. Again, seniors, beginners, intermediate, a home practice, 30 to 40 minutes, so that you can get to know you again, your body again, on your mat, in your time, in your home. Sitting comfortably, finding a pillow or a blanket or a towel rolled up behind you to set your hips anteriorly tilted forward. Close your eyes. Tall lift in the spine, relax the shoulders. The skull lifts and floats just a little bit as if you had a string and coming from the crown of the head lifting you a little taller. And let's begin by placing our hands again at the diaphragm. And for about a minute, just your breath, filling your hands, relax your shoulders, Feel the expansiveness of the diaphragm on the inhale. And how powerful that muscle is as you exhale and it brings your breath to your back. Diaphragm is the largest single muscle in the body. The billow, for lack of a better term, for your breathing apparatus. Breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth or in through the nose and out through the nose. Last nice full breath here. And let's take our hands a little closer to the upper chest, just below the collarbone. You can tuck your thumbs if you wish, or just put your hands nice and open here in the chest. And a few breaths here. Still breathing diaphragmatically. Bringing your attention to the upper lung. And then we'll begin to move the hands a little closer where the fingertips are just below the earlobe. Maybe you're cradling the jawline. The forearms and the elbows lie in the front of the chest. And three or four nice full rounds of breathing. Embrace yourself. Embrace this practice.
and then just resting your hands in your lap. We're just going to do a little bit of sipping breath or crying breath or baby's breath as they call it. So we'll sip through the nostrils and then just a nice exhale through the mouth. And a couple more. Sipping. And again. And on your next inhale, let's go ahead and take the arms up, Anjali Mudra. Match your fingers, match the lines in the hand as you exhale and follow that plumb line to the heart. Two more times, just like that. Inhale, come up. Exhale as you're lowering and feel the symmetry of the body, right and left. Our body has this beautiful symmetry. It's different anterior, posterior, inferior, superior. So up, down, front, and back are very different, but right and left, bones and muscles, the same plumb line. Today we're gonna to loosen up the shoulders a little bit. You could go ahead and fold your hands naturally and note which finger is in front. For example, my right index finger is ahead of my left. So whatever you naturally went to, we're gonna take the knuckles right to the center of the chest. Inhale as you press out, extending the elbows, pressing the palms long. Lift. Exhale as you lower your chin. Inhale as you look up. Exhale as you lower your chin. Inhale as you look up. Exhale as you lower your chin. Inhale as you bring your head to neutral or center and lift through the rib cage. Maybe just a little bit of a wave here. So extending the muscles of the rib cage. Now taking the inside of the upper left arm, it's going to meet the side of my left face and press. And a couple more breaths. On your next inhale, we'll lift nice and long, head to neutral. Exhale, lower the arms. Bring them back in, knuckles to the chest. And fold in the elbow. Kind of rolling the knuckles through the sternum. And now switch sides. So as you look down, my right index finger was ahead of the left. I'm going to switch it. So it feels kind of funny, like you're shaking someone else's hand. So we'll get a nice uh, weave here, knuckle weave. Turn the knuckles toward the chest or the sternum. Press out with the palms, nice extension in the elbows. Inhale as you lift up. Exhale as you lower your chin. 
Inhale to look up. Exhale, lower the chin. Inhale, look up. Exhale as you lower the chin, pressing the palms to the ceiling. Inhale, skull comes to neutral. And then resting the right side of my jaw, skull, into the bicep of my right arm. Three nice breaths here. Skull to center. Exhale as you lower. Knuckles toward the sternum. And roll the knuckles down, floating the elbows towards your rib cage. So we'll remove our laced fingers and just shake them out a little bit. Our next loosening of the shoulder, neck, scapular area levator muscles in the back. We're going to inhale the right arm up. I'm going to take my left hand and hold that right forearm and lift it a little bit higher. Then as I exhale, I'm going to reach my right fingertips behind me and kind of walk through the muscles of the back, the upper quadrant of the back. I'm playing a little piano with my fingertips or walking the fingertips through. Find your little massage here in this upper quadrant, shoulder, upper back, top of the lats. And then I'm going to take my left hand, place it on that right elbow, fingers forward. Inhale as I lift tall, pressing the triceps back, and releasing the fingertips. Looking down. Inhale to look up. And again, nestling the right side of my skull into the upper right arm. And feel the stability between that right arm and that skull. So I have more mobility in my left shoulder. And one more nice breath. Again, naturally breathe. Feel your own breathing. Lengthen your breath in and out, even. Same amount in, same amount out but it's your breathing. On my next inhale, your next inhale, I'm gonna take my skull to the center. Next inhale lifts all the way up, nice reach of that right arm, turning the palm out to the right, flexing that right wrist, and nice strength and contraction in the arms as I exhale down. And the other side, when you're ready, inhale, come up. Taking my right hand, picking up that left forearm just a little bit more. Don't lift at the wrist or lift at the elbow and stay off the joints. We want just the bones. So always, if you're moving uh, limbs, use the long bones of the limbs. Turning as I bring the left fingers behind me. A little bit of piano here. We're walking through just fingertip pressing, kind of pads of the edges of the fingertips. And then taking my right fingers on that left elbow, fingers face forward. Inhale as you lift. Exhale as you press back. 
lowering the chin. Couple more breaths so that you can relax into this shape. And then turning the left side of my skull or face into the left tricep, pressing my arm into my skull and releasing that right side so that the mobility will open that right shoulder. center. Lift through that left arm, release the right arm down, turning the left palm out, flexing the left wrist, and squeezing here, lifting the tricep, tightening the bracilius of the low arms. Lots of small muscles in the low arm. And lower down. Nice. Wonderful kind of kinking of the hose and then opening it out and stretching and letting it relax. You're kind of unkinking the hose and letting the blood flow come down into the fingertips. We'll take a nice Sufi circle, three in one direction, three in the other, just to kind of get our spine beginning to move. As I inhale, I lift up, exhale, I come forward and then off to the side. So we'll just do three of these. You might decide not to have your hands on the uh, inside of the legs, or you're using them as a prop for a little stability. And we'll swing it into the other direction, off to the left or right. It doesn't matter what side you started on. Just remember so that you can uh, work the opposite side. to neutral spine. We're going to go ahead and come to all fours and work a nice articulation between extended spine and flexion of the spine. So come to all fours and follow me here. Nice cat cow. So a big inhale here, prepare. Exhale. On your next inhale, I'm going to scoop up through my head, retract the shoulder blades, drop the low belly. That's why it's called cow. It's kind of the udders of the low belly here, just above the hips. And then as I exhale, I'm shifting back into the hips and rounding the spine up. Let that head release a little bit. Inhale as the head comes up. Retracting the shoulder blades together, arcing the spine, lifting the tailbone. As I exhale, I'm shifting back just a little bit and picking up through my lumbar, through the thoracic, through the cervical bones. One more. Inhale, cow. Working down the spine, not just working the center of the spine. And imagine that your vertebrae are like pearls on a necklace. And one pearl moves, and the other one is attached, and it moves, and on and on. And coming to neutral. We'll go ahead and exhale and press back onto the uh, shins, onto the hips and heels. This is hero's pose. If this is too much for you, you can certainly take that pillow blanket towel and sit here, maybe rise up just a little bit if that feels comfortable for you. You're having a home practice, so there's lots of props around. 
If not, and it's comfortable for you to be leaning back, that's a great extension in the quads. Protect your knees. If that's too much, you'd raise those hips up just a little bit so there's not too much torque on the knee. And here we're just going to do a nice twist to the left. Exhale as you also twist and rotate to the right. Look into the corner of the eye. Let the gaze of the eye take you. Your face or the front of the skull will follow the eyes. So as far back as the eyes can go, their muscles too, they can also be worked, keeping it at eye level. Inhaling as you go out to the edges, that helps lift that spine for beautiful rotation. Exhale as you're coming back to center. Let's go ahead and begin to extend these legs a little bit. So we're coming up to plank. Just extend one leg at a time, maybe roll a little bit through the arc of the foot. We did that in one of the earlier sessions, but we're just kind of playing with it to stretch it out a little bit. Bring that knee back, take the other one out. And open up the seam in the back of the leg, the seam behind the knee. And then take both legs out. You can certainly find plank here or always uh, lower the knees if you need to. Big inhale. As you exhale, press up through the palms, extending the elbows and shoulders. You might want to walk your feet in a little bit because for plank, if my feet we're close in down dog under the hip, and I go to do a plank, I'm gonna be way over the line. There's no more alignment of wrist, elbow, shoulder. So in plank, you will step back a little bit. Get that nice length, lifting through cat, pressing the heels back, and coming to plank. So plank dog is a different dog than this nice stationary dog where the, we walk our feet up about half a foot, uh, four to six inches more forward, and working on the heels. And today we're going to work on the tops of the feet. We rarely think about the tops of our feet. So here we're going to pick up the heels, and I'm just going to go ahead and release through my toes, uh, left toes, and then press the top of the left foot. I may drop the knee or float the knee, and then just back up again. Now that lift came from my right foot, so that I can kind of float and freely move the left. Here comes the other side, up comes the heel, up comes the set of toes. I'm going to roll onto the tops of the feet. You actually have muscles on the tops of your feet, too. Pick up through the ball of the left foot. That brought my hip up and freed some space to re-roll that right foot down. So we'll do it one more time on left and right. Inhale, the heels come up. There goes the top of the left foot. I'm going to put a little pressure on the top. Press in with that right ball to reverse the left foot. And here we go, other side. You can lower your heels or keep your heels in the air. So a stationary down dog or stepping back a little bit, inhale as you pick up your heels, cat like the bowl of the hip, and place yourself gently into plank. Exhale toward that down dog, step your feet a little bit closer underneath the hips, 
Find what's comfortable for you. Bend the knees and begin to walk back. Staying for just a moment onto the thighs. You could maybe rest into the thigh a little bit. Or you can come up off the thigh. That's a little more core work. Arms as high as ribcage, shoulder. Inhale as you come up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale the arms up. Exhale, hands to your heart. Inhale the arms up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Placing your hands down at your side. We're going to work today a little Virabhadrasana 1, Warrior 1. Feet are parallel rather than in line. They're going to be kind of like you're on railroad tracks, the irons of the railroad. So a little bit parallel. I'll step that left foot forward. You can have your Warrior 1 be three different phases or levels. First warrior one, the feet are about two feet apart and there's a diagonal line between your heel and your back big toe. In the warrior one, rather than turning the heel inward and having the knee go out at a 45 degree angle, you're going to pick up that foot, turn the heel so that it faces that back short line of your mat and pressing it into the mat. This is a slight bent knee. Left knee is right over ankle. You want to be able to look down and still see your toes, maybe half of your foot. I don't want to be too far forward knee over the line of the ankle, but also not too far back. That depends. If you're very tight in the hamstrings, you may be pulling that uh, thigh bone back just a little bit. But ideally, it's the knee being supported right over the ankle base. This is a very basic Virabhadrasana 1. Virabhadra was a warrior. He was an archer. And so we have an archer stance here. Arms can be at the side. Again, chin is in neutral. Not too tight. Not too lifted. Just this nice length in the back of the skull. And on an inhale, we'll bring the arms up. And this is extended warrior one, or Utita Virabhadrasana. Balance, pressing the feet toward the mat, nice pot of seal, foot seal into the mat. Inhale here. Lift and reach, however the shoulders are relaxed, not too tight up to the ears, a little drop in the shoulder blades. And then as you exhale, following the hands, down, circle sweeping to the side and the eyes, gaze down. The second phase of Virabhadrasana 1, or Warrior 1, would be a little bit more to the back, so I'll lean forward, take my foot to the back a little bit, but still have a nice seal in the back foot. So the ball of my right foot, the heel of my right foot, is grounded into the mat. Toes are still playful. If the toes are gripping, then you need to come a little bit closer. Toes are playful here. Now I have much more extension in that back leg. And again, the seam in the back of the knee is open toward the back wall. It seems as if my hips want to turn here, which puts a twist in the knee. And we want to make sure that the hip points, the bones, are turning and they match the two corners of your short line of your mat. So there's your kind of twin points. Inhale, the arms come up, follow the nice line of the plumb all the way up. 
couple of breaths here, practicing balance. Exhale, bringing the arms down. Chin comes to neutral. And the third phase of Virabhadrasana 1, Warrior 1, would be more extended, almost a lunge. So I'll come up a little bit, place my foot top of the mat a little bit, and come back to a lunging Warrior 1. Now I'm not in a low lunge where hands are at the floor or on blocks. It's kind of a lifted lunge. And again, if you need to bend that back knee, it gives you a little bit more buoyancy. That's fine, great strength for the quad. You could extend the back knee and drop in a little bit if you wish. And here, inhale, come up. Couple of breaths. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, hands come to prayer. Exhale, relax your shoulders. Breathing naturally, finding this new shape. Living in this new shape. Calm, peaceful. And when you're ready, two ways to come forward, either stepping up to the front of the mat with your right foot to meet the left, or you could lower your hands on the mat and come up with the help of the hands. I may bend that back knee, inhale as I come up, maybe find a little balance, maybe not. I just stepped to the side of that left foot, rock nice and easy, Relieving that left foot of its seal. And now we'll go ahead and turn around and do it with the right leg. Inhale, the arms come up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale, come up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Balancing on square feet, two balls, two heels. Right on the shelf of the pelvic bowl. This is Tadasana Mountain Pose. And this time, stepping forward with the right foot. Now I may step just a little bit forward and have a closer Virabhadrasana 1, about two feet, maybe two and a half feet. Diagonal between the heel and my left big toe. Inhale, rise. Squeeze the legs. Almost tear the mat in half with the power of the legs. So stability in the legs brings a nice peaceful easiness to the upper body. So it's not wavering too much if you put power in your legs. Exhaling on your exhale, hands to the heart. Second level, I'm gonna pick up just a little bit, stay in that line of that left foot and just continue my toes back until it's comfortable enough for my Left heel to anchor in, toes are free, arch is lifted, heel and ball pressed in, both feet. Inhale, come up, follow the line, meet your fingers with your gaze, exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale, come up, extended, warrior one. Exhale, hands to the heart. And the third phase, or level, and it's all up to you, and we, we work back and forth. Sometimes I come to the mat and I feel good just doing a basic warrior one. 
Other times I'll meet my mat and I want to challenge myself a little bit and come to more of a lunging warrior one. So I'm just going to open it up a little bit. Great extension in the back leg, definitely the knee over the ankle. Squeezing and pressing the legs. Inhale, come up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale, come up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Arms come to the side. Inhale as I step up. I do want to have a little spring. I might bend that knee. Put a little spring in my step. Come to a balance. Whoa, tipping over a little bit. Always happens. Exhale, lower that leg. Find that nice symmetry, that nice balance. And again, without the lift of balance, you can certainly just bring your foot back to the mat. In the warrior one, the back is slightly extended. So my low back has a contraction in it and extended, right? No matter what side we go to. So as I arrive at the top of these short lines, either side, I want to make sure that I come into a nice prayer squat here and begin to fold forward just a little bit and take my spine in the opposite direction. Maybe I've walked off to the side. Follow me here. Exhale. Little twist. Can I have a slight bend in the knee? Inhale, come up long. Walk over to the other side. Exhale, lower. I have a slight bend in the knee. Inhale, swing away. Come up. Arcing over to the center. Exhale, forward fold. Either the straight legs or a slight bend in the knee or a deeper bend in the knee. Remember, knees not too far to the ankle, though. I'm going to make sure that they're kind of pressed back with my. Uh, glutes a little bit to keep a nice thin bend. Inhale all the way up. That's a nice counter pose to warrior one. Exhale, hands to the heart. And then here we go as we find our way down to the mat, always taking some kind of a vinyasa flow. Vinyasa means to place your body in a special way. So we don't just collapse and go to the mat. Oh, I'm glad this is over and fall to the mat. We try to take steps to get back down. Either we're folding our legs or we're on our full back. Inhale, come up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, stepping back. Coming to plank or down dog. Inhale, look forward a little bit. Float those shoulders toward the wrists. Free up those toes. My feet guide my knees down. And I'm going to walk back. Press up. Use my arms and fingertips. And we'll work our way to our backs. And remember the hip off to the side. Either way, don't do the same one all the time we get into habits of course you might have one side a little looser than the other so we want to sometimes go off to the tight tight side swing our legs in front of this all of this is part of vinyasa flow and today we're going to take uh, two postures a little bit of a cycle with the postures before shavasana our final relaxation and they are going to be baby posture or apanasana literally downward air, and then into bridge, nice contraction of the spine, back into baby, beautiful flexion of the spine, and then rest. So as I lower down, I'm going to go ahead and cat wet that belly again, roll over the tailbone. Some tailbones are tender, be very careful here. You might want to go ahead and lift up a little bit, a little core, and then exhale, lay it down nice and gentle. Inhale, my feet come up, a little closer to the uh, glutes here. 
not too far in, right? You're just kind of under the knees. Exhale, I'm gonna press my spine. Actually bring my belly button toward that mat a little bit, and press that spine in. Inhale as I bring up one leg or both at the same time. Okay. Now you can either hold the crook of the arm around the back of the knee into the baby posture or apana, apanasana. Or you could certainly hold big toes, peace fingers, wrap around the big toe, make sure it's the pad of the toe. You don't want to get into the stem of the bone of the big toe. So that pad is pressed into my fingers as I open up the legs and come to baby here, making sure my shoulders are relaxed, not too lifted. Or you can take the inside of the heel and really give a nice press. There's a great uh, hip opener here, loosens the tendons and the ligaments in the hip. That's why we're very tight because we sit so much. So choices, crook, back of the knee, crook of the arm, big toe, press in, or the heels. Now as I inhale, I'm gonna bring my feet back to the mat. Exhale, press my spine in. Inhale, pick up the hips, bringing most of my uh, body's energy into the shoulders for bridge. Exhale, round through the shoulder blades a little bit to expose my thoracic spine. Inhale, the knees come up or legs come up. Exhale, find baby. Lower that chin a little bit. Nice length in the spine, back of the neck. Inhale, bring my feet back to the mat. Exhale, press. Lifting the pubic bone, both hip points and a little glute action as I inhale to come up. Find bridge. Exhale, lower down. See how I brought my shoulders in just a little bit to expose my back, my stretch in the upper back. Exhale, lower all the way down. And then beginning to take the legs out to the corners of your mat. That's a nice width for the hips. Arms are often at hip height, about eight to 10 inches off the hips. Palms are up. That externally rotates my shoulder and gets it to relax. Some people will bring their arms up over their head. Whatever feels uh, right for your arms. Close your eyes. This is where you could have little eye pillows or even a blanket or your towel resting over the eyes. As you draw them deeply into their sockets and you smooth out the wrinkles in the eyelids. Relax your jaw, loosen your tongue. And let the top teeth come to the bottom lip and just rest on top of that lip. Send your jawbone back to the mat. And just connect with your breathing. Follow your breath in and out. Shavasana can be two to 10 minutes or your entire practice. And just be here, right here. Namaste.